Hello everyone, this is Chris from Cryware, and today I'm bringing you a new series. As you probably saw by the title, we're going to be discussing PC gaming hardware myths. Today's episode is about entering this so-called PC master race. Let's dive right into it. And they say if, they say if we'll only avoid, avoid any confrontation with the enemy, he'll forget his evil ways and learn to love A lot of people out there are under the impression that they need to go out and buy things like a 1070 and an i7 and 16 gigs of RAM just for casual 1080p gaming. So let's try to debunk some of those myths, shall we? Now the first thing that you want to check for and look for when you're entering this so-called master race is the socket type. Depending on your budget, you have a variety of different things you can go for. If you're very tight on money, you might want to consider Intel's uh, third gen. If you have a little bit more than just scraping the bottom, you might want to consider a fourth gen. Fourth gen you can still get for a pretty good discounted price in stores because they're still being sold. Uh, we sell them at the store I work for. Um, and they have come down a lot in price. If you have, you know, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars, you can go, of course, uh, six gen, or you can wait for the new Z, uh, what are they, Z two seventy chipsets that are coming out soon. But now we're talking about people with a tight budget. So I can show you. I got this recently. This is a uh, Z ninety seven Pro gaming motherboard from Asus with a G thirty two fifty eight CPU in it. Uh, sitting 8 gigs of RAM over here. It's a great little platform to sort of enter this whole uh, PC master race. Now, the reason that this has such good value is that with this motherboard, you're able to upgrade a lot in the future. Um, you can upgrade to an i3, i5, i7, even overclockable chips like this one are gonna be able to stretch their legs because it is a Z97 motherboard. After you have found your platform of choice in the motherboard uh, socket type regard, um, you want to go looking for a graphics card. Now, don't just go looking for anything cheap that'll run games. This is a 620. It's around $5 on eBay. I've seen it for $5 at least. And sure, for a media streaming PC, it's fine. But for anything that's graphically intensive, you might want to not buy this. This, however, is a 550 Ti. Now, a lot of you are going to be thinking, why would anyone bother buying that? Um, and I can tell you, if you just want to play MOBAs, League of Legends, Dota 2, if you want to play some Counter-Strike, this is a great card for its value. You can always upgrade later if you want to go into 4K League of Legends, or if you want to play Battlefield 4 at high settings, or Battlefield 1, I think, is the one that's most recently released. You can always get something that has more horsepower than this. Speaking of which, this is a 770. These are beasts of cards for the price that they cost at least. Uh, they've come down so far that I almost wouldn't even consider the 550, but that's only if you're on a super tight budget scraping rock bottom. Now, if you can afford one of these, you might be able to stretch your legs to a 970 instead. Those have absolutely plummeted in price because of the new release of the 10 series GPUs. So, see if you can stretch your legs to a 970, if not the 770 is still an absolutely amazing choice of graphics cards. These run pretty much anything. I've had them run Battlefield 1 um, on 60 FPS, medium high setting, you know, GTA 5, not an issue. When we have found our motherboard, GPU, CPU, we want to make sure that our power supply can power it all. Don't go out and buy the cheapest power supply because that's literally going to blow back up in your face. You want something that's from a, a known brand, preferably something that you've heard of. Uh, personally, I always go with Corsair's um, power supplies because they've always been super reliable. They've been at a decent price and um, they smell good when you, when you unpack them. But yeah, when you go for a power supply, you want to make sure that they support the, the, the wattage needed. Now, this card here has an 8 pin and a 6 pin. You want to make sure that, of course, the power supply has that in order to power your components. Last but not least, we need to talk about storage. If you have a large Steam library like me, and you don't have very much money to spend on storage, you might be better off getting with a 500 gig or maybe a terabyte if you can stretch it, mechanical hard drive. Those have, again, they're falling in price all the time, uh, much cheaper than when I first built my system. That being said, if you can stretch your legs to a small SSD 
and maybe a 500 gig hard drive and a maybe 60 gig SSD, that would be great because you're gonna get the SSD performance and you can just always store your, your large Steam library on the hard drive. Now this is going to give slower loading times, sure, but your Windows experience and overall browsing and you know general workflow is going to be a lot nicer to do on an SSD. If you can't, no worries, just get a mechanical drive and upgrade to an SSD later. This is what makes the PC Master Race so nice, is the flexibility to always upgrade when you get the extra cash to do so. So to summarize what we've talked about so far, Start out small if you're tight on money, but make sure that the platform you start on is upgradable down the line. It's better to spend $10 more now and have a motherboard that can be upgraded than having to spend another 80 for a new one. Get a GPU that fits your needs. Casual gamers that play MOBAs and things like Counter-Strike Global Offensive or CS Source don't need big graphics cards. The 550Ti and the 770 are great value cards. If you want a little bit more performance out of your used PC parts money, grab a 970. They're plummeting in prices. If you want something new, I'd recommend the 1060. And lastly, but not least, do not cheap out on the power supply. Thank you all so much for watching. Adios.